Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks, bringing you a team Fridays. That's ask, be, ask the experts anything meaningful Fridays. It's a mouthful. I'm a fast talker, but today's topic we're talking about virtual assistants. And I'm bringing back my good buddy from the old school because I'm an old fool who's so cool. If you want to get down, I'm going to show you the way. His name is Terry. Terry Yonker's coming to us. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. All right. Thanks for having me. Yo, it's, we, man, a couple, couple years we go back, probably 10, I think, something like that, right? Easy, yeah. They, rat, they rattle by. You start looking at the old notes. Yeah, they, they go quick. Yo, so I, I want to thank you. So you're you're from Winter Park, Florida, I think, if I can remember. I don't know how I remember that. Winter Park, Florida. But you're Very in good. Vegas right now, so I appreciate you being on with us at 9, 9 o'clock local time, I think. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, happy to get up and going. So every week I think about topics like, okay, what do people really care about or want to learn more? And virtual assistants just keeps hanging in there. I still feel like people aren't using it enough right? And you're the only yeah. person I thought of. I was like, let me see what Terry's up to. And so I reached out to you yesterday on, on absolutely zero notice. So I, I appreciate yeah, you, no bro. Problem. <laughs> no problem. I'll probably save money from not being in the casino now anyway. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so t tell us, tell us about your, your, your virtual. Cause it, cause it's like, man, talk about some, somebody who was made for a pandemic. If anybody could yeah. be. Right. It was like yeah. you've been talking about this. I want to say we had you at Technopalooza in my local board four years ago and you were deep in right. it, had your the yeah. automated agent. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your, your virtual assistant journey, like where it started. Yeah. You know, you, you bring it up. We were just speaking about this last week on we, we were teaching this back in 2014, 2015. And the the ability to take it in and believe that it could be done was so hard to cross that barrier. You know, we would teach it for, we teach it still for CE credits for Florida realtors and that barrier of, I can't be done. I can't do it remotely. I can't, you know, hand over my stuff, my Google drive. And now we've been forced into it. So all of a sudden it's, Hey, we could do this, you know, and we were, and I'm in Vegas. Now we're taking a six month long road trip working virtually and kind of practice what we're preaching, you know? So we're doing a month in Phoenix next month. So that the, you know, the years to where this pandemic actually brought it to the mainstream has yeah. been great. So now that that allows this freedom, like to do this from Vegas or Phoenix and to have our virtual assistants in the Philippines, one in Seattle, another one in North Carolina, each doing their own part to come together and uh, make the whole machine work. So it's been great. So th there's a story that you always share. And it touches my soul because, you know, I, I'm a father, two kids. Now they're five and 10, you know, oh my goodness. where, where you talk about like early in your career, like you found yourself working and not yeah. living life and, you know, you were missing those moments. Maybe touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, that was, uh, you know, when my daughter was just born and you, you go through all the stuff where you need all the real attention and the time commitments. There's no, they weren't going to school yet, of course, or she wasn't, but you know, and I was working and my wife would send me little pictures. Oh, look, she took these steps. Oh, look, she did that. Oh, look. And, you know, you got to work and you got to make money. Right. But the, the vast majority of what I was doing was like entering listings or it wasn't sitting at a table closing on a multi-million dollar deal. I mean, when we're doing that, it's like, honey, I'll be home when I get home. <laughs> you know, that's different. Right. But the vast majority was entering listings, working on my marketing plan, working on. I think I'm breaking up here. Uh, working mm -hmm. on the little, okay, great. Working on the little minuscule things. And I just, I had a breakdown, you know, where I was like, why am I doing this? And, and those of you that are, you know, most of us get into it and start the treadmill and you can relate because you start getting successful, but success means you're preparing your listing presentation time and time again, you're answering your listing time and time again, you're whatever it is that you're doing. So yeah, so that I had a breakdown and basically read the like many of us the uh, four hour work week, which is anything but. But it's about delegating and pushing the processes down to the lowest possible level. And what I found is when you have to examine it, I was doing three dollar, four dollar an hour work in the middle of my day. And so, you know, I could say, hey, I'm saving money, I'm doing it, I have control, but I'm working for four dollars an hour. And once you have that realization then that opens the Pandora's box. Then you can get all the tasks that need to be done, assign them to the right people to where you're still 
meeting with listing or meeting in a listing appointment or whatever you deem is the highest value stuff, talking to J man on, you know, his channel, you know, those types of things like those are, <laughs> you gotta have like the top stuff. So you're still working, right. but now we're working on as much as you can talking to customers, building relationships, talking to J man, doing those types of things and not, you know, filing my Google drive or cleaning it in alphabetical order or whatever the stuff that we have to do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's so important when you, when you really step back for a moment, right? Because so many people are busy working in their business. They're not working on their business. They're like, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I got to do this. Yeah. I got to feed my family. And, and when you look yeah. at it, yeah, million dollar deal, you got to put that together if you're putting the deal together. But putting the brochures together for that, preparing the paperwork for that, doing all these things. And, and I always like to use the example, like if you looked at what you're doing right now, if, or if you detailed what you do in your daily, in, on a daily basis, and you would pay yourself $100 an hour to do what you're doing, or pay somebody else $100 an hour to do what you're doing. If the answer is, hell no, <laughs> then, then you, sh you should be doing it, man. You're the brain maker. You're, you're the... <laughs> Bill Gates doesn't come into the office and go, what do I got to file folks? You know, what do we, what do we got here? <laughs> so, yeah. so crazy. So what's a good first step? Is it, is it like detailing your workday and figuring out like what, what they can get rid of or what they can get off their plate? Yeah. You know, you're asking the right question because as we teach this and we've, you know, we have a course, we teach it for CE credit for Florida realtors. Again, we taught it at uh, Technopalooza. You know, the, the first step is, actually documenting and recording what you do because that's one of the challenges we've had when we have you know our unique way of doing it is streamlined or streamlined and systematized and just moves and then you want to try to hand it to somebody and they say well wait a minute i don't like to do docusign i like to go sign this or i like to use this and so everything is your business is unique everyone watching this is unique so the first step is just recording getting a screen recorder something like this but, and doing and talking, saying what you're doing. You can't offload what you're doing until you even know what it is you do, right? Or how you do it. So you say, this is how I like to write a contract, a listing agreement. I like to go six months and I do 50% and on line 14, I put this in, and talk. And right. now right. you have it documented. So then the next step would be to have a virtual assistant say, okay, take this video and turn it into a one page document or two page document. This is going to be your manual and this is how it, how it goes. So without that step, so often we try to just hire someone and say, do this. And you say, Oh wait, you didn't call them after three days. You didn't do X, Y, Z. So it's getting it from here. My bulbous dome here out onto <laughs> a paper via video. So right. without that crucial step that has nothing to do with the fun stuff, which is, Hey, I've got all these assistants doing it. It's, that is what I would identify as the number one obstacle to success. If you can nail that, then you can get assistance. If someone quits, you can just pick right up where you left off. And uh, yeah, so that would be the first thing I would say is to have at least a couple things that you can give to someone to document before doing. So let's, uh, let's give them a tool that used. Is it screencaster? Pro? Let me see. I have it on my, on my Chrome taskbar. I'm trying to see what it is. It's an like orange arrow, but um screencast yeah, screencast omatic yeah screencast omatic so i'm gonna type it in the in the comments so you guys have it it is worth going pro like i always tell you when the stuff is worth going pro or not in this example it definitely is because what will happen is once you have the recording it syncs right to your google drive automatically uh if you have a an upgraded google drive or a g suite like i do and like I, we recommend that you do then you have unlimited you know, unlimited right. storage in that drive and automatically syncs it. I like it. I like it a lot. So screen yeah. cast -o -matic. I'm probably going to spell this wrong, but you Google it. You'll find it. It's a, it's a Chrome extension. Screen cast -o -matic. cast -o -matic. Yep. Cast -o -matic. And then cast once you get your account, you can just do work. And then we have it where a channel is called undocumented procedure and then once they work through it they can work it through it move it to a folder it says documented procedure so it's kind of a a nice process of just building your systems building your house you know one step one video at a time yeah so um i really like that if you're watching this and you're a person in this market who you're like i can't possibly work anymore than i than i than i am 
Uh, I don't know how you guys are, but I would imagine you're just like we are and many of the people we talk to across the country, but it's a crazy seller's market, you know, like where we would write one to three offers for a buyer. We're writing a dozen, right? If, if it's right. the average buyer. So we are working more <laughs> doing in, which you, doing what used to be income producing activities, <laughs> but now it's like a lot of great practice on, on how to do these things. But also, um, you know, you, you need to bring people on. You want to build a team or you're a small broker owner uh, and, and you're watching this. This is the perfect way for you to start creating your training manual so that you can train each and every person the same way each and every time. And I got this from Terry years ago. It was like, that's why you buy a franchise, right? Yeah. They got the book. They got the manual and say, this is what you do. Start to finish. You're going to have a successful business. Right. So, uh, you know, K KW, KW actually laid that out, even with the old millionaire real estate agent from however many years ago that was. Yeah. I mean, when you dig into it, and I'm not a, a Keller Williams guy, I've never worked for them, but, you know, that book, that manual basically is the framework of that. It's, okay, this is what your assistant does. This is what your, whatever, listings manager does. And it, it was, the blueprint was there, you know, years ago, but for some reason, it's so hard for us. We dive in, and like you said, Jay, man, we just go, 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 and it's like, wait, take a step back, implement this framework and tweak it, make it your own. But boy, 80% of it, if you just spend whatever, 15 bucks to get that book from 15 years ago, you know, you'll, you'll be further down the road than you can imagine. What What's the message for the people that are control freaks? Cause there's not too many control freaks in real estate at, <laughs> at all that, that have, you know, they have trouble letting oh nobody can enter a listing like i can or schedule showings or do a brochure or do these <laughs> these things like are you serious nobody does yeah. a brochure like you um yeah. what, what's the message for them how can they start to let go well you know we that was one of the obstacles we had in, in training and teaching realtors because we're all alike right and i'm the same way and i know how you how everybody is and say we, we can't do that so to get across what we say is and, and how we've done it because I'm the same. I'm you, I'm, we're all, we're all in it together is that out of the 10 steps to enter a listing, let's say, which one is to order the pictures two, enter it, three, upload the inspections, whatever you do. Step 10, this listing does not hit the market unless step 10 is done, which is my broker review. And then you'll go and say, Oh my goodness, you forgot to put the, picture of the dog run or whatever. And so you can have that control. Right. So, but what we're doing is getting you out of one to 10, moving it to 10. And so nothing hits the market until that goes. And you have to decide what level of comfort you're, you know, what level of comfort that each individual agent has. But I think as you'll find, you get more comfortable with your person. And as they come on board, that gets less and less and less because they start knowing you and you have documented. Yeah, that's so good because it's it, and there's so many different nuances to what you do. And like when you say about talking yourself through it where it's like, hey, I never realized that I do my photos as if I was walking through the home and I just thought everybody would do their photos like that. It didn't occur to me that somebody else might say, hey, I want to start in the kitchen first. I like to start like I'm walking through the front door and then the living room and then the kitchen and then upstairs and then the basement and then the backyard. But I would have never really thought that through. I would have just said, okay, do the photos. Right. Such a, such a good point. There it is. So uh, if you're watching this, we're going to give you some resources. This, come, this is coming from Terry. Uh, messenger bots. What about messenger bots? How do you feel about that? As I bring one up. You know, Hopefully it's possible. Well, with, with messenger bots, the reason we love like the virtual assistants is because we can still give that touch and where the world's going to bot i know sometimes i want to throw my phone against the wall because i get in one of those cycles you know where i'm like i want to talk to so this when you know when you can get somebody for four dollars to nine dollars that speaks english you know well and knows what they're doing boy you can you can have a hybrid let's call it to where the messenger bot yeah. you can as long as you can get to somebody then i think you know they're great yeah so i mean we've we've designed our messenger bots to provide resources on demand that really don't require somebody to be talked to, you know, like, Hey, I want to yeah. get a home equity estimate at my home. Or well, we're going to ask them, you know, where's, what's the address? How much do you own your house? What are some of the improvements? All that's done in the bot. And then when it's ready, like I say, like it's on a platter, then yeah. you get notified and say, okay, Terry, uh, we need you to do 
a comparative market analysis or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so this, what we've set up so for you, you will bring you. You're, you're implementing it already then, J-Man, right? Like the yeah. one to 10 steps like you just talked about before, rather than you get in there, you're there. And then in step 10, you grab it because one through nine is done. So this is, I think, uh, you know, a hybrid of the, vir you know, uh, virtual assistant type thing just at the next level, which you always operate the next level, Jamie, and you're right there, right? Uh, so you're yeah. there. Wait, wait, hold on. We'll give you one of these. <laughs> yeah, that gets the DJ horn. Uh, but this is just going to bring you to resources from Terry. Um, and the first resource is a virtual assistant assistant, right? Um, and it will yep. give you a, a list of all that. So you, if you scan the QR code here, take your smartphone out. Um, if you're watching this on your smartphone, then we're also going to put a URL for you in the comments. You click that, it's going to bring you right through to Messenger and have a list of all of these URLs for you uh, in getting started. So let me just bring this off and then we're going to go over here to two circles. Pa Boom! Look at that. Here we are in the virtual assistant assistant, folks. Um, so how, what, how would we get started here? What, I kind of like it. I, I was playing with it yesterday and pre preparing for this, but. Yeah, this, this is great because uh, Nick Loper, the guy that started this, I think he just recently sold it. And he basically tested every single VA service out there and did a review on it. And so, I mean, when I opened this Pandora's box, I didn't know all this was here either, you know, and this is where you can even nail it down into, if you want marketing people, they have marketing VAs. You want bookkeeping people, you can get bookkeeping VAs and really, you know, nail it down and use somebody else's expertise and review to lean on because this, let's face it, the biggest thing is trust that we come across. I mean, we can lay out all this beautiful, you know, story and, and an operating procedure, but, so you have to trust. And so this is like one more step to, to getting that trust. And we use, um, I was hiring them directly and uh, you could get them for $500 a month in the Philippines, virtual assistants, and they know what they're doing and it's been great. But what I found was whenever somebody wouldn't show up or something would happen, I'd have to go through a hiring and training process again. I mean, we had a, we have systems of course, but still, <laughs> you know, you had to get in there. So we now use virtue desk. It's a company out of Seattle, and they basically have like a middleman. They provide a supervisor. So we pay like eight sixty an hour for administrative people through Virtue Desk, and that includes their supervisor. So again, when we first started, yeah, we uh, and they're good. We went through three or four to find a you know a good one. That's my main VA because people things happen. You know, people don't show up. Somebody just just like if you were hiring an American assistant, and. Uh, yeah, it's been great because I just said, hey, get us another one. And they go through all the hubbub of doing it and screening. And it's been great. So if you guys are having trouble reading this, they have different VA categories on here. Virtual assistant companies, Philippines virtual assistant, India virtual assistants, U.S., U.K. Uh, and then also different resources like VA company versus freelancer versus agency, how to select a survey, um, assistant benefits, and then even like a sample uh, virtual assistant contract. And I know one of the things that you talked about uh, last time was thinking about redundancy. Like they're in the Philippines, right? If you're working with somebody in the Philippines, making sure that the building they're in has backup power or backup, every, you know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and I actually went over there to see my team, I guess, a couple of years ago now and just to see where they're working and to film with them a little bit. And, uh, you know, you forget it's easy to forget, especially in these times that we're, we're American. And I mean, the, just that, just being born, because you're born here or ended up here, you won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, in, in today's environment, it's maybe non-PC to say that, but man, these guys got to gotta recognize, like you go to these places where they, they're not happy if they have clean water and they're smart and they're hardworking. And so when you go over there, and I come from like the, you know, you come over from the Cosmo and you go visit my buddy's house, he's, he's probably a little smarter than me, definitely hardworking, our team, and yet they're in squalor. And you say, why? Like, how? And it's just a lottery. Like, our system that we have here is so powerful and unique that you really give thanks. But to get back to your question is, like, yeah. when you go there, they have blackouts. They have, you know, all kinds of stuff going on over there. So you have to make sure that they, when their internet goes down, blackouts go down, that they have a setup, a backup internet, backup generator, so that they can keep cranking. And I've had guys 
God bless them for their five dollars an hour. Everything went out, went south. They would go to a Dunkin' Donuts at 4 a.m. and they had to buy like one coffee every 30 minutes so they could still use the Wi-Fi and keep working for them. So could you imagine like there's like three of them there at 4 a.m. at Dunkin' to enter my listing to do these things that we think are insignificant, but this is their livelihood and they're just cranking. So, uh, so that's one of the things that virtue death helps with, or, or these third parties that you're, that you showed them on that site, they'll make sure all that's in place before they even present them to you to hire, um, which is a bonus versus going in, uh, like with online jobs.ph is a great one where you can just interface with them directly and uh, take all that on yourself. So, uh, either way is, is fine. But boy, they're, there's something else. When you go there, it's opening. You know, it's really eye-opening. Yeah, I could imagine. Man, how fortunate we really are. And, and we get to be in this the great real estate industry where we help to bring people home. We change lives with every transaction. It's just fantastic. Uh, so we did the virtual assistant assistant. What else do you think is important kind of to mention? We want to keep it to right around 30 minutes. Uh, but yeah. what else is important to mention as far as going through because for me like i'll just pick one of those i'll go like this review 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 poof, all right i'm gonna just blindly go and pick one of these or um a lot of people are already probably working with fiverr which is a a form of outsourcing right or uh upwork or something like that what what are some of the differences than finding somebody at you know maybe i had an experience where the gig was really bad on fiverr that i paid 25 bucks for and uh, I'm like, I, I'm done. I'm not going to use virtual assistants ever again. Like what, what's the difference between, between those two? Well, I think it's like, uh, when you go on a listing appointment and you say all the wrong things, you don't get the listing. You just say, oh, I'm done with this for this listing appointment stuff. doesn't work. No, you go back, you sharpen your saw, you analyze where I should have said this. I should have said that. So I think it's the same in this. Anytime you change from, a solo grinder into a business owner, which is what this process is, right? Um, I think the, the most important step, I'm glad you brought up Fiverr because that's the easiest way to start getting your business in the pieces that you need to. So for example, we have um, so, uh, a gal that writes all of our descriptions for the MLS. I'm a terrible writer. I don't. Oh, that's, that's great. There's a lot of people that need that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And then you for like $10, like you mentioned, you have that piece done. So now you can say, okay, so from now on, all my listings, I don't write. I just put this order in and in two days it's done. So that would be one thing. And then pictures too. You know, I know J man, you do some of yours, but even if most of us, if we can just oh, no, I hire don't a photographer, I hire a photographer okay, well, 100 percent of the time. Perfect. Okay. So that, yeah. that's, that's exactly the right way to do it because now that whole process turns into a, a 15 second, send an order to your photographer, right? So all we're trying to do is take these big monsters and put them into a one step. So the, the writing the, the remarks is now one step from Fiverr, your photographer. So that's what I think, rather than just say, hey, I'm going to hire an assistant and do all that full bore, maybe get these pieces that are easily transferable because if you do this with three, four, five things, all of a sudden, you have the pieces together that now you're ready for that virtual assistant because her or his or her task is just going to be order it from my photographer this way. And when the photos come in, order them, J man, it's funny you say that because we do have an actual documented. This is, we want the front door first, and this is second, this is third, do the drone on 16 and that level of detail will already be in place. And then when those photos come in, then you're ready for it the virtual assistant to start doing all that stuff. So that would be kind of maybe the, the way to ease into it before you go whole hog, as they say in the South. Uh, if you're a solo grinder, here's a song for you. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding That's all it. my life. It's just a short, <laughs> short little sound bite that ties in with what we're saying. But it's, uh, roll the dice, roll the dice. Um, so much. So we have here. Yeah. Janae, yeah I, this... love I love you. Hey, hey, you could Go do ahead. this stuff, Jay, man. Like these are the things I always dream of doing, right? You think like I'm going to play the, the Nipsey hustle or whatever that guy's <laughs> name is. I'll Yo, have, you know I'm it. Gonna, Go ahead. You do this stuff. And I think it's great. It opens my eyes to say, Hey, it doesn't have to be stiff. Hi, I'm Terry Yonker. I'm oh, here. Oh no, man. I, I'm, like, I'm always thinking. Just, 
I'm always thinking, man. Like, I love it. I love it. Like even look at when I do a video class, this is one of my favorites I just added. All you gotta do is trust me. All you gotta do is trust me. All you gotta do is trust me. Okay? I'm gonna do this uh Star is born. But uh man, so that's so many good points. Uh I wanted to say that when when you think about fear of loss, right? I think that, that that's what keeps a lot of people from doing uh doing these things, but it's like I'm, we're not asking you to invest thousands of dollars, dude, right? It's like, it's something right. where you could say a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. I'm going to throw at it right now. And then if it doesn't work, what did I lose? That's like a bad ad yeah. that you place in the newspaper. If you were still doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I agree. And even if uh, like we say the incremental steps, because whenever I hear these things, you know, a lot of times we say, rah, rah, I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to do this. But I'm more of a systems guy. And, you know, when you're selling, sometimes you'll have, like, more emotional, touchy-feely people, and then you have systems. I am definitely in the systems category. Right. So for, to, for implementation, for those of you that, that I can relate to, at least on that level, it's, you know, I saw the great interview you had uh, with Alani with Wise Agent. So even if you have a CRM and say, look, let me just write the first five steps that I do to get my postcards out or whatever it is, your, your, your social media posts, whatever let me write that out. Okay, now I do this every day. Click, click. We don't know how, but there's five things I do. Now let me video it, and then each thing will have five steps. And so that's how I would say, like, nuts and bolts say, okay, at least I could tell you if J-Man showed up, say, oh, and you said, hey, how do you send out your weekly marketing? What's your schedule, and how do you do it? Oh, I'll show you right here. Here, I, I send out, I post on Instagram. I do my weekly Facebook. Here I tell regular, I say weekly stuff, it's stuff. have that system in place, even if you don't know how, say, here are the five things I do, then we're going to go to the how, then you can even go on Fiverr before you hire somebody virtual, say, hey, I need the administrative task done, I want to get five hours for 50 bucks, and then let them try, I mean, then you'll know if you've done it correctly, or say, document this, take these five videos and document this, don't do them, I don't trust you to do it, right. but just document this into yeah, my, do document everything. My I mean, as, as yeah. I, as I used to travel the country, I want to say, as I traveled the country, you're traveling still, but as I used to travel the country and talk to different high producing agents, the highest producing agents, we're talking million plus GCI, they come in and they're only talking to clients. They're not coming in and touching right. paper or folders right. or, or listing presentation. They, they don't even make their own schedule. They show up and they go, okay, you're meeting with this client at nine o'clock. Then you're out showing houses from one you know, from this time to this time, that's how you buy back your time so that you're only doing the most important things. And like Terry said, I'm not going to miss my son's soccer yeah. game. I'm not going to do this control, you know, run, run your business. Don't let your business run you. Right. Right. And even if it's, even if you start with an, an agency and I keep thinking of like marketing, you know, I had a great conversation with one of my friends that works for a big insurance company and they sell big mortgages and does, you know, institutional mortgages. And he said, Oh yeah, my marketing person took care of all that calls and it was great. And I said, boy, only if I could have that, I'm doing, but it's just a cost. It's just a number. Like just cause he has this, like, Oh, this task yeah. cost, you know, say 500 bucks for them to do it. You know, that the company paid, I was like, wait, I could just have a marketing person pay them 500 bucks and they could do that for me too. So in effect, you could be like the big insurance companies, but just, you just have to have your mind right and say, Hey, and then ask them, how should I do this? Like when you have experts, I, and again, talk about control. Even when I talk to my marketing expert, like I'm telling them, you know, I don't even have a Facebook account and I'm telling them about what I want for marketing. So sometimes you can say, Hey, all right, how are we going to do this? You know? So, uh, it's a good eye opener and that's a great way for somebody to step in just to say, I have my preconceived notions, but you tell me you're the marketing person and then, you know, step back. So. That's another good way to, to dip your toe in the water. Oh, sorry. I got distracted. ADHD, yeah. folks. ADHD is fantastic. <laughs> um, anything that you want to say in closing? We're going to hit him with the A-team uh, theme as we as we blast out of here. Just, hey, if an old guy like me can be in Vegas, outsource it to all these guys, so can you, especially you millennials and you kids, man. This is like, this is easy stuff for you guys. You know, if we can do it and and shoot some dice out here in Vegas, then so can you. Dice. Let's go, folks. Thanks for tuning in for Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. Terry, thank you. Uh, hopefully you're going to have some good luck out there. Um, 
you did what was most important today, which was hopped on the show with us. And now you're going to get some, get some money, get some money in the casino. And we're going out with the A team. Get ready. You remember. Fuck, fuck them up. Fuck, fuck them up. How can you do this? You just do it. 